Well, thank you so much for coming. I know you had some holdups with your uh, flight going on. That was crazy. Um, but I've got yes, a room. Yes, it here. was. Yes, yeah, it I was. Got, I got a room full here at Velma Jackson. And we're also recording this for our friends at Shirley Simmons and Miss uh, Tammy Sharp's class, as well as our friends in Old Town with Victoria Kirksey and Angela Reed and Germantown High School with Vicki Park. So we are uh, several uh, students are going to see uh, this today and let them see how uh, you're someone right here in, in town um, in the in a STEM engineering field. Um, now we got some we got some questions about exactly what it is you do, but uh, just want you uh, tell us a little bit about your background and uh, how you got into what you are doing. Uh, so uh, I graduated from Mississippi State University uh, with a uh, biological engineering degree. Um, I'm originally from Vicksburg, Mississippi, so I'm a transplant to the Jackson area. Um, so after I graduated, I took a position in Memphis with a, um, I, don't, I don't even know how, you, how to explain it, but we essentially take waste from schools and businesses and um, just about anybody you can think of that had any uh, chemical waste. And we would take that and then properly package it and dispose of it. Uh, after that, I left that company and then came to Jackson to work for the Mississippi Department of Environmental Quality. Yep. I worked there for seven and a half years. After I worked there for a while, um, <clears throat> I had the opportunity to join with energy. Uh, you know what? Let me go back a little bit. Let me tell you about what I did at uh, MDEQ. So MDEQ are, is the um, Environmental Regulatory Agency for the state of Mississippi. So they're the ones that issue the permits, and they're the ones that make sure that the permits are being complied with, and and a whole bunch of other stuff that okay. I mean I could I could do an hour on. Um, one of the cool things that I got to do while working with MDQ was I got to be a firsthand um, responder to the uh, BP oil spill. Oh, cool! And so um, I was there on the ground when the tar balls were rolling onto the coast, wow. and that became a primary part of my duty for over two years, um, implementing program, help implementing programs, um, helping with the process of cleanup, um, you know, scouring the whole coast from Jackson County to uh, Hancock County. So that's from Alabama to Louisiana. Um, got to learn a lot about the barrier islands that we have out there. A lot of people don't even know we have islands on the uh, yeah. coast of Mississippi. We have like three or four out there. Um, so I, I got to do a lot of things. I met a lot of good people that helped me in my career. And I, you know, got to see and do things that are going to be written about in history. Um, and I was actually a part of it. And I, I guess I forgot to mention this, but I actually worked on Hurricane Katrina relief in my first job. So um, one of the things about that was I was one of the first people that got to come back to New Orleans even though uh, I was living in Memphis, I can tell you now that working in a environment where you're the only person on the interstate, it's, 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 it's pretty weird. That's it's true. You look on both sides and you're the only person on the interstate. If anybody's ever been to New Orleans, you definitely I don't have see. You know, I mean, it's hard to imagine. <laughs> yeah. And so uh, after leaving MDQ, I transitioned over to uh, Intergy. And uh, from there, um, I have been working as an environmental analyst. And so I have worked um, primarily with power, uh, power generation plants. So the actual plants that make the power, um, I help manage the environmental program for those plants. So we measure different things that are in our water that we discharge from the plant. We measure our air emissions. Um, any uh, waste that we generate, we, we do meticulous record keeping to make sure that we're within our um, category and, you know, and, and a bunch of other things. I mean, I, I literally could go on about that, but, you know, I, I will say that uh, energy as a whole is a very, is one of the very best environmental stewards in the state. Oh, well, and, and I know they're also one of the largest employers and they are uh, pretty much always looking for people that can, Feel skills. I know it's it's a company that's always hiring. They, you know what? They look for the best and they look for the brightest because they they want to be the premier utility. And so to get there, you know, we want to make sure that we we are hiring the people that not, that not only are 
uh, the best and the brightest. But I think the one thing is that they care. You know, it's not just a job that they actually care. Because, you know, we want to make sure that we're, we're customer-centric. Okay. Um, now, we mainly have – we have a lot of middle schoolers are going to watch this, and we got ninth and 10th graders with me right now. So I know they are a few years away from college. So can you talk a little bit about your experience in Mississippi State? And I know you were a part of NESBA and, and some of those organizations and why, uh, and why you chose to go to a PWI um, for your engineering degree. So not to date myself, but when I graduated um, back in 99 from high school. Uh, You're only one year older than me. <laughs> there was no HBCUs that had an engineering program. Okay. So they had they, they had a three two. So you would do three years at their university and then two years to finalize at uh I think Ole Miss and Mississippi State to to finalize getting your um engineering degree. But there was no HBCU that had a full on engineering degree program like Jackson State has now. Yeah, yeah I knew that. Um, knew. I did not know that. That's cool. Yeah. So I think uh, Jackson State's program started in around. I want to say 0405, so I was a couple of years ahead of that. And so one thing that, you know, I tell people all the time, had I graduated now, it would have made my decision a lot more harder um, because, you know, the HBCU, the, going to an HBCU, I know for a lot of people is the goal. And while I did enjoy um, <clears throat> my time in Mississippi State, and I, and I do, uh, I made some really great friends and, you know, I really, um, I really, um, I don't, I don't think of my time in Mississippi State as being negative. Um, I'm a product of two parents who attended HBCUs. Um, uh, they didn't, uh, they didn't attend them in Mississippi. So my dad's from Arkansas. He attended U, uh, University of Arkansas Pine Bluff. And my mom, while she is from Vicksburg, she attended Albany State in Georgia. Oh, wow. So um, I have parents that went to HBCU, so I understand the importance of them. But it was just that the the field and the major that I was trying to uh, get into, I, I didn't really have an option to to attend HBCU in state. Oh yeah, and, and that makes perfect sense. We all know that the Mississippi State is known for their engineering program. Um, now, with with our STEM curriculum, and I can and I know I can speak for all the teachers watching this later. As somebody with an engineering background, one thing that the students always get frustrated with, if they don't get it right the first time, they get very upset. So in any engineering field, whether it's electronic, whether it's computer, industrial, biological, any of that, how important is it to use the, uh, the uh, trial and error, the design process to go through to make sure things get right? So I can speak on that from the engineering part and from what I do in my, you know, day-to-day -day, uh, activities. You know, for the most part, it's trial and error. You're, you're going to work a word problem and you may get it wrong. You'll discuss it with the teacher. They'll point out where you got it wrong and then you'll be able to go on and then answer the question. But I, I really believe that the failure is actually – most one of the most important parts of the process because it gets you thinking i mean think about it like this if you got it right every time the first time you'll you'll never develop your cognitive skills so if i get it wrong the first time and i have to go and ask questions and try to broaden my horizons the next time i see a problem i'm going to start that process i'm going to step through the process that i learned the first time okay well i looked at it this way it didn't work so all right what are my alternatives and that helps you, I think, a lot further in life than just getting it right every time. Oh, absolutely. Um, now, uh, one thing that and we also we're trying to really push uh, in Madison County Schools is the need for these STEM careers. So um, and obviously, you know, me and you are about the same age. Um, when you were coming, uh, when you were uh, at Mississippi State, I'm not sure how many um minorities were in the engineering program and I'm really sure there were not many females of any color in the program so how important is it to diversify this field because it's such an important and growing field in the country so let, let's look at it like this so STEM is important in regards to it's a major driver for um, economic success supply chain everything that we want to do in the country all right so you have that on one hand so the 
diversity, on the other hand, it allows people who have different life experiences to come together and problem solve from different areas that they were uh, that they have expertise in. So if you have people from the same background, they're probably going to look at the problem in the same manner. And then you'll hear stuff like, oh, we've always done it this way. Um, you know, it's always worked this way. So, you know, why, why would we need to improve it? Because, you know, it's, we're doing really good with it this way. But when you have people from different backgrounds and experiences coming together to help the thing that's helped driving economics and supply chain issues, I mean, that, that's a major key component for success. And, and I guarantee you, if you look at a lot of companies who have a diverse um, lead team and, you know, management and frontline workers, I guarantee you that those companies are a lot more successful than people would realize. Oh, absolutely. Um, and, uh, and let's say uh, uh, you wanted to move on from, from energy, just, uh, just hypothetically. Um, how are the skills that you have now transferable to, to other areas or other, uh, even other parts of the country? So I'm, I work in a very niche field. So I've been doing environmental work the entire time since I've graduated. Oh, cool. The skills, the skills that I've learned over um, the, the three uh, companies and agencies that I work for um, are very, if I find a job that match my skill set, I would be able to go in and talk confidently in regards to past experiences, past problems, past problem solving that I've done in regards to the, the different um, experiences that I've had. I work at a regulatory agency and I work for the regulatory community. So I've been on both sides of the line. So, you know, and that works in regards to different um, engineering backgrounds or technical backgrounds, because I have friends that are mechanical engineers and industrial engineers. And, you know, they say when they walk into interviews because of the experience that they have, they know already that they can do the job. You know, at that at that point, the interview just becomes a custom fit. Do I do I fit with the company? Does the company fit with me? So, I would stress for people to when they go to jobs, learn as much as you can. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Don't be afraid to you know jump out there and see what you can and can't do. Um, you know, especially when you're when you're first getting there under some supervision, of course. And that way, when you get those experiences you'll be able to transition if you want to, to another facility or company or organization and be confident that not only can I do the job, I'm the best candidate for the job. Awesome. Um, before I get to some of the students' questions, I do want you to talk a little bit about uh, NESBA. I know it's a great organization and how important is that as far as networking? Because uh, I know the educational aspect of college is important, but how much more important is that is that networking through a student organization like NESBA? So um, I would say that it's important in regards to you have people that are going through some of the same curriculums that you're going through or maybe a little bit ahead of you. And the, mo and the most important part is, is that they look like you, so they understand your unique challenges. And so um, organizations like NSBE, uh, um, Women in Engineering, that's another one that they have, you know, organizations like that are key, especially to people who don't meet the criteria of a white male, which, you know, traditionally has been um, the, the identity of an engineer. So um, those organizations are key and they're pivotal. Yeah, and just for uh, anybody who doesn't know, the, the NSBE is the National Society of Black Engineers and um, at Mississippi State has a great chapter in that. Uh, I went to LSU grad school, they had a, they had a great chapter there as well. And it's something I would encourage any young person, uh, any of our uh, any of our minority young people watching now or later, if they want to get into any type of engineering field, to get involved in that organization. They're doing some great things nationwide. Um, but I do want to get to some of these questions that they have, and these are all uh, ninth and tenth graders. And this is Trevion Blackman. He's a ninth grader, and he asks, "What are you most passionate about in your position?" So, in my position, I uniquely get to see the impact that I do. Um, working as an environmental analyst, I actually get to see 
the the impact that our, our environmental stewardship uh, has on our community and the planet as a whole. You know, we have a lot of different initiatives that we try to do, and we try to make sure that we are um, one of the leaders in environmental stewardship. So um, I'm I'm passionate about uh, being able to directly see the impact, and that that that's a motivation, that's a driver for me every day. That's awesome. Now, this is a really interesting one. This is Amaya Dixon. She's a ninth grader. Um, and she's speaking as far as environmental analysts. Which work setting do you prefer, indoor or outdoor? You know what? <clears throat> so uh, earlier in my career, I definitely would have said outdoor. Now, um, it's not necessarily being indoor. I get to do both. So if I'm having a day where I'm, you know, sitting in front of a computer screen all day and you know, I just need to get out. I have I have all the opportunity I need to get out into the field. So I don't necessarily have a preference. I just love the fact that I have the option. That's and awesome. And that's that's the most important part to me is that having the option to go between indoor and outdoor. So it's so this is definitely a if somebody wanted to get into a field uh, an area of engineering that is not behind a desk all day, this is something you definitely have options to move around and, and get to see different uh, uh, settings. So, so I would say um, a lot of different engineering, you do have the option. Um, I know I have a friend that's a mechanical engineer and he gets to, he usually works in plants. So he usually gets to get out and get into the plant and look at different things because you're always having to troubleshoot. And so a lot of times you can't troubleshoot until you get to where the trouble is. Absolutely. Uh, this is Alonzo Johnson. He's a ninth grader. And he asked, what is the favorite project you have ever worked on? BP oil spill. Yeah. H hands down. Um, I, we got to fly in helicopters. We got to uh, we got to ride in boats uh, to and past the Bear Islands. Uh, some people got to get in planes. Um, I was literally um, some days I was just tasked with walking the beach finding car balls. I mean, like that is. I don't think that I will ever have a better sector of my career where I'm that I was literally tasked with walking the beach and looking for top balls I mean it was the, the and, but you know and I, I say all that but I know the BP oil spill uh, was very uh, and, you know had a negative impact on a lot of different people but as far as like my career that's probably been um, one of the most um, exciting and fulfilling uh, jobs that I've had okay uh, this is from Brian McMurtry, and he's in 10th grade, and he asks, what do you look forward to every day going to your job? So some people look at it as a challenge, uh, but the one thing I look forward to in my job is that I know that every day is going to be different. Every day. I don't think I've had a day that's been the same since I've started. And so I look, I never get, I never get bored. I, it's never dull. So I get to go to work and, you know, try to decide, you know, hey, what challenges are going to come today and how am I going to attack them? It keep, I feel like it keeps me sharp that way. Okay. Um, now, this is uh, one more based on your educational background. This is from Camaria Smith. She's a ninth grader. And she asked, what is something you wish you could have been better at before you got your job? Oh, that's a good question. That is a, that's a really good question. Um, that person deserves a gold star. Um, so, so one thing that I will say is that, and I, and I've been, and I've been thinking about this a lot lately is that I wish I had more of a business aspect, um, to prepare for the jobs that I've had. Um, you know, I was so focused on the technical aspect of engineering, the problem solving, the, but there's a key component that comes with a lot of the pro the projects and the programs that, and it's the money side. And so if you don't understand how the money works, then, you know, you can be behind the eight ball, so to speak. So that'd be, that would be one thing that I wish that I had been more uh, prepared uh, to handle um, starting out. You know, I had a doctor tell me the same thing Friday, um, how she learned, she learned patient care, she learned medicine, she learned all these medical techniques, but she didn't learn the business side. So, would you say for somebody coming out of high school, even if they want to get into a certain STEM career, that they it might be a good idea to minor in business or even after you start your STEM career to get an associate in business just to have that business background? 
So I would say um, maybe uh, if if you, let's just say you go to school and you um, you decide you want to do STEM, you know, whether that's you know engineering or you know some sort of technical degree or you know mathematics. I would maybe stroll on over to the business school, try to talk to one of the uh, counselors over there and say, hey, you know, what are some bottom base courses that you would recommend me to get a better business aspect of how the world and money works? You know, what are, what, are, what give me 12 credits that I can take over my time here at school to, to get me a better foundation. Uh, that that's something that I wish I had done. You know, maybe take an economics course, a you know, mm-hmm. finance course, because you know you get these jobs, and uh, I don't kids. I know you probably hadn't heard of these yet, but you get these jobs, and they they start throwing stuff out like, hey, four hundred one k, hey, pension, um, and it's like, okay, is this invisible money that they're investing over here on your behalf? But you don't really understand how that works and it's taken me a lot of research <laughs> to even kind of figure out what what's going on and then you know with stuff going on like cryptocurrencies and you know people being able to buy stocks on cash app i mean you kind of want to know how this this stuff works so absolutely and, and even though uh and even though you are on the engineering side energy still is a company trying to make a lot of money so there's always going to be a business aspect, no matter how much of the technical side there is and how much community service there is. At the end of the day, there's still money in somebody's pocket that has to has to get there. That's true. Um, now, and I, and I know we're almost out of time, and I appreciate you making some time for us today, especially with your crazy schedule. But I ask every speaker I have the same thing. Um, like every person in this room, you grew up black in the Mississippi. Um, mm-hmm. So what can they do? following the footsteps uh, of someone like you that's become such a thing? Well, I think successful is a relative term. Uh, <laughs> so, um, you know, there, there can be stumbling blocks. There can be um, things that uh, somebody who's not um, a minority doesn't see um, in regards to trying to become um successful or trying to even just earn a degree. Um, One of the things that I tell people and that I try to live my life in is, you know, have a good circle, you know, have a good circle of people that are going to influence you and push you to be your best. And another key aspect of once you get that circle is if you're the best person in your circle, you got to get another circle because you (laughs) always want to have Cause you always want to have someone that you can mimic and target after, um, you know, that, that can kind of guide you, e- even if it's one of your friends. I mean, cause I've, I've learned a lot from uh, just my peers and people that I've grown up with um, in regards to, you know, entrepreneurship, uh, 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 guidance, mentorship, um, all these different things. So I think your, your, circle of influence is probably your biggest um, caveat. And so that's why things like Nesby is important when you get to college and, you know, things like that, because you're increasing your sphere of influence, you're increasing your, uh, your positive uh, circle. So that's going to help you in the long run. That's awesome. And, 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 and that's some great words. Uh, so, and again, uh, thank you so much for joining us today. I know you had, uh, you had a long night. I know you got a really busy schedule, but uh, it was it was great to finally meet you face to face, and uh, I enjoy. I appreciate you taking the time for us today. Uh, no problem. Uh, if, you know, if the kids later on have any questions, you know, let me know. You know, we can do another Zoom, or you can send them via email or messenger, and I can just you know try yeah, to respond then, from there. Once we can lift our COVID restrictions, we'd love to have you on campus to talk to our STEM kids. <laughs> uh, I, I would definitely love to do that. All right, my man. All right, I'll talk to you later. All right, thank you. All right, see you.